Bibles to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, 16th chapter, verse 24 and 25. Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verses 24 and 25. Amen. And it reads, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Lord, I know it was definitely meant for me. So Father, I just ask you, Lord, to remove Antoine Watts, Lord, and let the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit do the talking for me, Lord. Let your people get what you want to hear from this, Lord, and not what I want to say, Lord, because it's all about you, Lord. We just ask these things and all things in your son's name, Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. Today's message is, who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? Lord gave me this message like two weeks ago. <clears throat> Over the last couple months or so, I've been really, really been struggling, really been fighting with a lot of things in my life. And the Lord asked me, who are you pleasing? Are you gonna please yourself or are you gonna please me? One thing, the sell the bag, Matthew 7, 22, no, Matthew 22 and 37 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Amen. Meaning, it's all about him. Amen. We belong to him. Amen. Everything in this earth belongs to him. Amen. So it all should be to glorify him. And the question I want to ask is, what are you willing to deny in your life to satisfy God and to bless God? The word deny in Webster means to restrain oneself from gratification of desires. There's many of definitions, but that's the one that stood out according to this, to restrain oneself from gratification of desires, meaning to put away what you want to get what he says to do. The Lord loves us so much that he sent his son down here to die Amen. on the cross Amen. for our sins. He didn't sin. We sinned. But he loved us that much that he came down here to bridge that gap yes, sir. back to him. All right, all right. Back to him. Now, when he say deny yourself, he's mean denying this world. All right. All right. There's so much things in this world that could distract us from getting away That's from right. God. That's right. That's right. The number one thing I believe in my heart is these cell phones. A cell phone can do everything. You can watch TV, you can look at the internet, you can talk on it. You name it, that cell phone can do it. How many times have you ever just put your cell phone away and said, I'm going to read this Bible? Putting away that phone is denying yourself. That is... It's tough. I know because it's tough for myself. But 
through Jesus Christ that strengthen us, we can do all things. We can do all things. But what he's really talking about is denying ourselves from this world. The prince of this world. Satan. Those desires. See, Satan can make this world look so beautiful. He can make this world look so tempting, so luscious to, that you will stop what you're doing to want it. All right. To want it. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 through 10, and I'm reading this out of God's word because it says it's so plain. It says, don't you, do you know that wicked people won't inherit the kingdom of God? Stop deceiving yourselves. People who underlie word continue, which is a lifestyle, not every now and then, not, okay, I did it this month and six, seven months, you fell and did it again. We're talking about all day, every day. People who commit, continue to commit sexual sin, who worship false gods, those who commit adultery, homosexuals, or thieves, those who are greedy or drunk, who use abusive language or rob people will not inherit the kingdom of God. All of us has fell underneath every last one of those sins, including myself. Because the word says all of us are sinners. And if you say you're not, you're a liar. All right. And if you say that you're not, you're telling God that he's a liar. And the Bible says he does not lie. Amen. All right. Jesus wants us to pick up our cross. Yes, sir. Like he picked up his cross, All right. All right. which was our cross. When you pick up your cross, that is a commitment an ultimate commitment to him. Back in the Roman Empire days, when they found somebody guilty and they said, you're going to pick up your cross and carry it to that hill, that was a commitment. That was a commitment to death. Yeah. But see, the difference is, is that you was that commitment to death was glorifying Romans. It was glorifying what their rules they stood for, which ultimately is death. They were, that, that is what, when they got up there and they hung up on the cross, that was Caesar saying, this is what you dying for because you violated me. But see, there's a different death that Jesus Christ did. But see, he didn't die for us to die. He died for us to live. Did you hear me? He died for us to live. We're all walking dead right now because we're in this flesh. But he said in his return, at a twinkling of an eye, he'd give us a new body, an everlasting body. No more pain. No more tears. I don't know about you. But I want that body. But see, in order to get that body, we must deny ourselves and pick up that cross. And put him first. Him first. Matthew 10, 37 through 38 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Point blank. He has to come first in all our ways, in all our thinking, in all we do. If Jesus Christ isn't the first person you send thank you to when you wake up in the morning, you got a problem. It's not your alarm clock that woke you up that morning. 
I know for me, I get up before my alarm clock get up. So that tells you, that's Jesus giving you one more day to get it right. To get it right. He doesn't want to see none of us perish. He wants us all to be underneath his glory. He wants us all to be to heaven. But that's not so. Because some of us are predestined to go to hell. And the sad thing about it is, not everybody that sits in the church is going to heaven either. Only those that do the will of his Father. You can sit in church and praise God all day. Give holy hands. He told me that. He showed me that. Six years ago. Six years ago, he showed me that. Took me off this earth. Showed me all the glorious things of God. And as I got off this earth and go higher and higher and higher, I get to this bright light. And get to this bright light. And like you can just feel the joy that I've never felt before in my life. I said, heaven? Heaven? God, is you here? Is, is, are you, is it? And as soon as I said that, he dropped me right back to this earth and gave me Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those that do the will of my Father. And at that time, I had to sit back and say, am I doing the will of the Father? And he said, no. You go to church. You go to Bible study. But as soon as you leave that church, you're back into this world. And that's a lot of us today that's back into this world. The not denying ourselves and picking up our cross. God loves us. He truly loves us. He could have wiped us out when Adam first ate the apple or the fruit or whatever fruit it was. He could have said, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this. But he didn't because he wanted to see his creation grow. We are images of God. Every time we look inside that mirror, we see God. We see God. And if you're not looking at God, the Bible says you can't serve two masters. All right. Who are you serving? Because one of those servants is going to send you to hell. The book says that. And if you don't believe me, open yours and read Revelations. It'll tell you all about it. So where do you want to go? Who are you pleasing? Are you pleasing yourself or are you pleasing God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He should get the glory, the honor, and the praise in all we do. We go to work. He should get the glory, the honor, the praise we all he doing. We clean up our house. He should get the, pull it, the glory, the honor, the praise in all we doing. We drive our car. Glory, honor, praise in all we doing. Because you must realize it was him that gave you that house. It was him that gave you that car. It was him that gave you them clothes that you got on. It's him that got that money, gave you that money in his your pocket. It's him, not us. And that's where we get it twisted at. Us, all about me. Selfishness. Those that are selfish, I used to be selfish. I know, Lord, no, I was a selfish person. It was all about me. All about me. But Lord showed me something different. He said, if you do these works for me, I give you everything that you ever desired. That's why the Bible says, you just, he would give you the desires of your heart. He would give you the desires of your heart. But he's not just going to give it to you if you're not putting him first in your life. All right. He's a jealous God. The Bible tells you that. He is a jealous God. Look at the Israelites. Over and over and over again, they do good and then fall back into their old ways. 
we must not fall back in our old ways. We must not backslide. We must press forward and pre and get to that goal as Paul talks about. I don't know about you, but my goal is to see God. I want to see what a street look like that's made out of pure gold. I want to see what that look like. I want to see that tree of life. I want to see that river that's flowing down the middle of that city. Because it's, it's going to be beautiful. The Bible says that we cannot imagine. We can't even imagine with our mind what the glory of God is like. He says our afflictions are light compared to what we go through. What are you doing to please God? The Bible says, and I'm going to say this in God's word also, John 14, 21, whoever knows and obeys my commandments is the person who loves me. Those who love me will have my Father's love, and I too will love them. Leviticus 26, 3 and 4 says, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. God wants to bless us. Blind wants, he wants to give us everything that we need. But it's up to us to if, if we want it. And it's how we want it. Do you want it the worldly way? Or do you want it God's way? Do you want it death way? Or do you want it everlasting way? There's two ways. Only two ways. And you got to figure out which way you want. Because if you don't, the Bible says those who don't know is going to get punished just like those who do know and don't obey his commandments. There's no excuse to not know who God is. Amen. There's no excuse. You could walk out this door right now and look around and see God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at the tree. Ain't no scientists made no trees. Ain't no scientists made these birds. Amen. Who controls all that water out there in that ocean? And it stops at one spot. And it stops at one stop, at one place. That's God. And that's God alone. But once again, what are you willing to do to please God? Because see, I'm going to tell you what my Savior did to please his Father. He came down here after 24 generations. He came down 24 generations. He kneeled in the Garden of Gethsemane and asked God, take this cup away from me. Take this cup away from me. But let your will be done. So he denied his flesh for what his father wanted him to do. Yes, sir. And he was arrested. And he went to judgment hall to judgment hall and was lied on and spit on and pulled on and tugged on for no reason at all. He had a thorn crown stuck on his head. He was beat to the, he was unreckonable by his own mother Mary for the will of his father. What are we willing to go through for the will of our Father? He carried our cross, not his cross. He carried our cross down to Calvary Hill. He laid on that cross stretched wide. Nails in one hand, nails in the other hand, nails in his feet. Stretched out wide, humiliated for us. For us, what can we do to please him? Amen. Why can't we please him? Amen. He died on that cross for us. He gave up his life for us because he loved us that much. Are you willing to give up your life 
for him? Are you willing to give up your life for him? I know I am. But that's a personal question that you got to ask yourself. And the best time to ask that self question is when you're looking dead in the mirror. Because there's nobody to answer to but to yourself. All right. And as he lied on that cross, they pierced him in his side. And he said it's finished. He said it's finished. He gave up his own ghost. Nobody else did it. He laid his own life down for us. And they buried in the ball tomb Friday night. And he laid there all night Friday night, all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power and glory in his hands. He defeated Satan. He defeated Satan. So what are you willing to do to please God? Are you willing to give up your selfish desires? Amen. Are you willing to deny yourself Amen. and pick up your cross? Amen. We want to thank God for the message. Good question. Who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? Everything that I have is because of this book. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that I have at all that's not because of this book. Amen. And, and, and God has blessed me with the best church in the world. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. you really have. And God has allowed me to know that I have what he wanted me to have. Amen. Amen. I have what he wanted me to have. He didn't want me to have 300, 500, 1,000. That's not what he wanted me to have. Amen. And he blessed me with what I've got. And I'm as happy as I can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I pray and try so hard to teach you the little secrets that's in the word of God that will allow you to have whatever you want to have. The Bible tells you that it is the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. It's the little bitty things, amen, that you overlook and cause you to miss out, amen. My wife will tell you, when I balance my checkbook, it's got to be to the penny. Don't, 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 well, you were two pennies. No, no, I'm going to stay there if it take me an hour or two hours until it come out to the penny. Amen. Because I sat and thought about that. I said, now what if whatever bank you use took one penny from every person once a day? Just one penny. <clears throat> and you sit and figure out all the people that's in, in their, their chain of banks. And in a week, they done took over $10,000. And you saying, well, I ain't missed but a penny, so I ain't going to worry about No, I'm going to worry about mine. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for the message, the messenger. We want to extend the invitation. Perhaps there's someone here who has not, does not know Jesus Christ.